Hey guys, welcome to the video, to the channel, and this week's segment. This is going to be a little bit different. There's some housekeeping I need to get out of the way. For those who are new though to these weekly segments, make sure you check down in the description so you can get kind of a brief summary on what these weekly segments are all about. Now, last week I didn't get a chance to do it and a lot has happened over the past two weeks. So I'm going to have to break this week's segment down into two parts, maybe even three, because there's so much to cover. The other thing is that moving forward, for the next couple of months, I'm going to be really busy. My secondary job has to deal with sales and usually I get extremely busy. So I will try and keep up with these weekly segments, but I may miss one every other week or so. You know, in addition to the jobs, there's also the prepping for the holidays and decorating and cooking and, you know, being just good hosts and taking care of the guests when they show up. And we usually get quite a few guests that appear during these uh, a couple of months so yeah it's all of that stuff it's just gonna make it a little bit more challenging to get these weekly videos out in time or even at all now today this video here will cover the Sony systems as well as the emulation scene and then hopefully if I have time the miscellaneous mentions tomorrow's episode part two will be primarily only switch stuff because so much has gone down in the switch scene regarding homebrews and things like that and then if i need to make a third part it will be the 3ds the wii and the wii u and anything else that i left behind that's straggling now i still have a few videos that i'm currently working on including an update to what's going on with team executor there's some crazy stuff that has surfaced there that i need to let you guys know about i'm also working on two switch tutorials i'm pretty much done with one one of them i'm also doing my review type video which was supposed to come out last week but things just got delayed hopefully on the weekend i can get that out if not early next week the open board series retro arch series uh more ps3 ps4 tutorials and it, just a whole bunch of other stuff so you know i appreciate you guys watching much love going out to all of you out there i hope you enjoy this one i've already been talking enough let's kick things off with the ps3 and the only thing we'll be covering for the PS3 is an update to WebMAM Mod. You guys should already know what this is, but in this update, we actually get a version number that's higher than the previous update. Normally, for the past several months, they've been updating WebMAM Mod, and the version number has not been going up, but it has now. In addition, we actually get to see what's been done in this latest update. This is something that they haven't been doing either over the past several months, so we get to see specifically what's been done to this particular update which is great the package file that you need is the one right on top and it installs into your custom firmware ps3 or hen system and next up a couple of things for the ps4 as we head on over to the ps4 scene first modded warfare updated his all-in-one this is now on version 1.8 this works with any modded ps4 up to 6.72 there's a lot here including like cheats for various call of duty games this has ftp this has a payload injector just a bunch of stuff and it's done by modded warfare so it works it looks nice and it has a nice uh, GUI. Anyway, if you have a modded PS4, you definitely need to give this a look and a try. There's a version that installs to your PC and there's also a portable version as well. And the next thing I'll be covering is some big news that seemingly came out of nowhere. I did a video about it yesterday. It's the completed development phase of an E4 flasher for the PS4. Four. It's now entering the testing phase. So if you haven't checked that video out, I'll put the link in the description. Make sure you take a look at that too. All right, now we head on over to the Vita scene. A few things here have been updated. I'm not gonna go over everything, but just to highlight a couple of things, Chocolate Doom, a different version of the classic FPS shooter has been updated to 3.1. Grand Theft Auto 3 has just been ported over to the Vita as well. It's on version 1.0. The emulator MGBA has been updated. We're gonna talk more about that when we get to the emulation section. Vita Launcher has been updated to 1.9. And then there's Hexflow Launcher 
launcher. This is something that's brand new that came out within the past two weeks. It just got updated recently as well. It's on 0.2. So this is yet another way for you to display and launch your games and your homebrews, but you could do it in style here. Take a look at the way this looks. I love the presentation. Your games and homebrews and whatnot are in this 3D format showing the boxes and the box art it looks really sharp you can even make your own custom box art and backgrounds as well if you have a modded vita this is definitely worth checking out especially if you want your vita to have some style some flashiness and a little bit of swag with its presentation you can't go wrong with this the last thing we'll be covering for the Vita is an update to Auto Plugin 2. So Auto Plugin 2 is a tool that allows you to install and uninstall plugins with just one click. The plugins that work with this are listed here on the GitHub. It's a pretty lengthy list. Now over at Logic Sunrise though, they state that this actually works with up to 90 plugins. Anyway, there's a lot of information here on the GitHub page. When you go over to the releases, in the past two weeks, there's actually been a couple of releases. So if you want to see what they did in each one, you can check out 1.15, then look at the change log in 1.16, and then grab that 1.16 VPK. And next we head on over to the world of emulation. Now, some of you may have heard of PCSX2, which is the go-to PlayStation 2 emulator for the PC. Well, guess what? Team Libitro let Logic Sunrise know that they have been working on porting this over and making it into a Libitro core for RetroArch. Now, before you get too excited, for now, when this gets released, at least in the near future, it's only going to be for the PC version of RetroArch, but hopefully other platforms will get it later on. More on that in a minute. So they've been working on this for a while. They said it's getting close to the point where it will be usable. It'll still have some bugs. And of course, as with all things Team Libertro does, they're going to continue to work on it to make it better. There's some demo videos here over at Logic Sunrise, so you can check them out. Now, they did state that one of the things they are working on is to make the code base of this emulator a lot more portable, but they did state that it was going to be a long term project. Let's just keep some optimism, keep our fingers crossed and hope that in the not too distant future, we'll get to see this fine PS2 emulator pop up on other platforms. And next, we have an update to CMU, which is the Wii U emulator for PC. I've covered this to death before in the past. It is the absolute best Wii U emulator out there. This is version 1.21. Point four. I'll also put a link to this video here in the description. Normally when these updates come out, someone puts out a video showing that latest update in action. And that's what they're doing here. As usual, everything looks pretty impressive. And next we have an update to MGBA. This is a standalone Game Boy Advanced emulator. However, it's also capable of playing Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs as well. It's on 0.8.4 and it can be used on many different platforms. When we come here to the read more section, you can see all the fixes they did to emulation as well as other general fixes and improvements. And the list is definitely extensive. So if you've used this in the past, make sure you update and get this latest version. When you go over to the downloads page, you'll see here there's a bunch of different platforms this works on, including including Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu, 3DS, Switch, Wii, and the Vita. And by the way, this is a good emulator that focuses on speed and accuracy. And lastly, we have an update to another Game Boy Advance emulator. This one is the No Cash GBA emulator. This one's capable of emulating Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, DSi, and Pocket Station. It seems to be only for PC, but this is absolutely one of the better ones. Usually it ends up at least in the top two or three of everybody's top 
Game Boy Advance emulator list. Anyway, this update adds some significant improvements overall. You can check out some information here at Logic Sunrise, but you can head on over to the NoCash GBA page and you can download the Windows version there. All right, and we're going to actually go ahead and cover two quick miscellaneous mentions. First, there's been an update to RPCS3. This is a PS3 emulator for the PC, and it's the better one that is out there. This update does the usual little fixes and enhancements here and there. When you come here to the main page, you can download it from the download tab or the download page. It's available for Windows, Linux, and BSD. And lastly, there's been an update to PK Hex. Now, PK Hex is a save editor for core series Pokemon games, and you can manipulate various save files from the different Pokemon games that are out there on all the different platforms. You can get the latest version from the download page. If you're not familiar with how to use this, you can go over to the tutorial section and just look at the tutorial that pertains to your particular save file. Again, this is for the PC only, but you can manipulate various different saves from a bunch of different games on a bunch of different platforms like the DS, uh, the various Game Boys, GameCube, Switch, 3DS, and so on. And that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel, as always, you know the best way to do any of those things is just to hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.